According to data, latest data, China has replaced the United States of America to emerge as India's top trading partner with $118.4 billion in two-way commerce. In fact, the recently released economic survey also pitched for enhanced Chinese investments in India, as in asking for more Chinese FDI to come into India amidst a challenging geopolitical landscape across the world. Let me begin by introducing uh, Mr. Rakesh Kar, who joins us in the studio. Mr. Rakesh Kar, editor of uh, uh, News 9 Newsverse. Uh, Rakesh, uh, talk to us uh, of all countries from where India wants more FDI from. China seems to be the choice at the moment. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say officially it's the choice, but it's quite in contemplation right now. Yeah. Suddenly it's become the most active piece of discussion in terms yeah. of the policy framework. Let me just put it in context, Krishna. Uh, first and foremost, globally, uh, geoeconomics is driving geopolitics. Uh, that's the tenor, whether India's relationship with Russia or with US, and now in China, there is a challenge because we have a geopolitical problem. We have a border standoff with them, which is going on. And we that border standoff led to uh, several economic challenges in India-China relationships. Even as trade ballooned in the last 10 years, it has grown four times. So in that sense, trade has been going up and up and up. But FDI, that's a different you know, yeah. uh, 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 idea itself. So uh, China presents an opportunity and a challenge both. Now the economic uh, survey, uh, suddenly created a momentum about this particular story and it's a big global story everybody is watching what next to come from the government of india on this so economic survey again has to be put in context is it a defining or an abiding policy document i have had an opportunity to speak to various economic advisors over the last few years i am reminded of one particular conversation i had with G arvind virmani he was chief economic advisor from 2007 to 2009 he is currently the Niti Aayog member. So I asked him a point blank question. What is your KRM, Mr. Birmani? Is it to recommend only? Is it to forecast? Or there is some binding you know, relationship between what you prescribe and whether it's liked or not? So he had a very categorical answer, which is very interesting in this context of the economic survey flagging the Chinese FDI need. So Mr. Birmani said, we are asked to do about 10, 20 ideas. We present ideas, some of our own, mostly of what we are asked for. That's very important here. If it's an ask for idea, even if it's an ask for idea, then there is some currency and movement in this. So then this particular story came up in the press conference of the finance minister on the budget day. You remember that? Yes. So she suddenly said that we maintain a arm's distance from the chief economic advisor. So that put Mr. Birmani's conversation again in context. <laughs> but she did say that I'm not disowning the chief economic advisor. So that's where we are. After that, uh, in spirit of interview that the finance minister has done, she has been saying that there is no idea on my table, but within the sections with the government, there is a conversation. Now, uh, yesterday, Niti Aayog uh, Vice Chairman uh, Suman Berry uh, told PTI that uh, we are exploring it, but we need clearer guidelines. So that's where the catch, Krishna, is. The catch is that FDI in India, as you would know, uh, and you've been reporting extensively on this particular area, is mostly in the automatic route. Mm, mm. And what we have done to tame Chinese investments as FDI, we brought in this Press Note 3. So Press Note 3 is a neighborhood country kind of a diktat. So if you have to transit from Press Note 3 which puts a curb on any investment from the neighborhood, which includes China, uh, doesn't uh, name any country, but is essentially targeted at China because that's where we're looking at from investment. Mm. Then, you know, should it go to automatic route, then where do, do the checks and balances come? Okay, fair enough. Good point uh, there. Let's now talk to uh, a policy researcher and corporate advisor. We have Mr. Dr. Shrinath Shridharan now joining us on the broadcast as well. Uh, Shrinath, great talking to you as always. Uh, clearly, one way or the other, a case is being made for Chinese FDI into India. Yeah, I mean, here I want to pick what Rakesh left it at. I mean, he's been, I think, very diplomatic and kind. Uh, I mean, I would want to go one step and ask, saying, um, are these various think tanks and advisories, uh, be it the CEA or Niti Aayog or the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council, uh, almost all of them are very active in writing out various ideation papers, uh, which is almost across Indian media all the time. Are these, uh, let's say, ideation balloons, which also give a kind of deniability to the government or legislator at large? saying that let's test the waters and let's see what's the feedback that we, that comes in. So in a sense, is it like the track two of what the governments do? I would think probably yes. 
uh, I think China, Chinese investments have been there for quite some time. But to look at the numbers that you showed, the FDI is very different from their other investments. And FDI has also have been having a challenge, right? We have taken a large standoff, let's say at least in the financial services space. RBI has been looking at every single Chinese investment, including the large Chinese uh, lending app scams that we've had in the last two and a half years. So larger narrative about asking for China, will it also come with technology transfer, considering that we want to push manufacturing, considering that we want to push through semiconductors, solar and others, because Chinese old uh, the reign, uh, according to me, in all the technological IPs, whether they created it or not, they have it. So the large question is, let's look at a simple example, citric acid, very, very basic raw material component for food processing, chemicals and other things. In, in Indian my pharmaceutical and food processing entities still have to import because it is a sheer global dominance and monopoly of the Chinese firms. So how will we break into some of those? Will by give, uh, giving them access to bringing FDI capital into those sectors, will we be able to bring in those supply chain? I think that is a larger question. Right. I mean, the trade partnership is very different from FDI. The good point to make a good word to use supply chain, and that's why I want to bring this conversation to Rakesh. With uh, I, you know, specifically mentioned about India plugging into global supply chain uh, for many things. For example, its own ambitions in terms of creating, uh, uh, being a number one manufacturer of mobile phones in the world will mean greater alignment with China, uh, isn't it, uh, Rakesh? See, uh, Krishna, we live in a completely interdependent world. I mean, globalization has been in currency for decades, and we've been looking at more and more globalization, except one particular period, that was the COVID period, when economic nationalism came into being. So that debate, whether economic nationalism will overweigh globalization, I think we are today squinting towards globalization and more and more of it. So in the interdependent world, you cannot produce everything yourself. You need the supply chain, and you cannot replicate being a China overnight. So in that sense, to fill up your supply chain dream, you will have to bring in components from China. So that reality has dawned on us. And I, it's important to point out here that CII, just after the budget, or maybe on the eve of the budget, did make a formal presentation. So there has been a flurry of activities, like uh, you know, Srinath mentioned, uh, the economic advisory, you know, the finance ministry. CEA is part of the finance ministry. It is chief economic advisor to the finance minister of India. So okay. in that sense, uh, there is suddenly, we have pivoted from a no, 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 baat mat karo, China ki, duro, to the reality that this is something that we need to look at. Right. Industry has made a pitch saying that we will get uh, our dream of you know being the leader in that space cannot be met unless and until we allow FDI. And FDI will come with a certain checks and balances, maybe more in this case, mm -hmm. where they have to invest and also bring in the skilled labor. I think it's going to be beginning with skilled labor. Okay. That's where visas is suddenly becoming a talking point. Okay. Skilled labor, uh, Dr. Shrinath Sridharan, my simple point is that we're even looking east, we're looking at the dragon simply because of the challenging global geopolitical climate from, because of which FDI from other sources are likely to dry up. See, that's one, that's one aspect, but not really so. If you look at the, uh, let's say, AI, quantum computing, or any of the deep tech sector, you will still get money from the western part of the world. And that's something that China has been trying, and there's a huge supremacy war between uh, US and China. Uh, who's going to first crack the quantum computing, the first uh, thousand qubit one? And India is nowhere in the picture, right? I mean, we have a very, very small budget when it comes to quantum computing. So we would need to partner and collaborate with other countries. But the challenge that, as uh, Rakesh spoke about, uh, economic nationalism, the reality is a lot of these emerging technologies are about supremacy. The one who controls that, AI, quantum, or deep tech, are going to control the narrative in the 21st century. So I think it will be we'll be living in fool's paradise to think that uh, we will collaborate and everybody would share technology very nicely and uh, the sort of country bromance will happen. I think that's a challenge. And I, and I think one of the questions that I want to rephrase the, the entire concept of India is, can it be actually frictionless? And okay. I think that's a challenge for diplomacy. Uh, Rakesh, you had a quick point to make on that. Yeah, quickly, first one. FDI is, you know, easier said than done when it is an issue of frictionless. There will be friction when FDI comes, especially <laughs> from China. But it's very important to point out, Krishna, that uh, this no-no on China-India economic relationship is actually not a reality. The reality is that when it comes to oil imports, India and China have created a new economic block with Russia. The trioka of China, India and Russia is a new reality and they have reimagined the oil order globally. Point number one. Point number two. Before that, also historically, China and India have aligned on WIT, uh, w, you know, WTO, 
And before that, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, which is now the new development bank, India and China are the co-founders. So it's not that we haven't been talking to each other on economic matters. The clampdown on investment, many of the Indian large startups were a couple of years ago owned by Chinese. So that has also been scaled down. It's a reimagination so that the political sensitivity is not becoming a challenge. Okay. Uh, Srinath, uh, I want to take uh, your uh, quick closing comment on the matter. So I think uh, I agree with Rakesh that there will be competitive pressures despite the collaborative efforts. The reality is that, but what the equation that we don't understand or we don't know is what happens if the, uh, I mean, China is not a democracy. So if there is a power change uh, or let's say there's an equation change between India and Russia, if, they, if let's say the next time Russia goes through a power change, what happens to all the trioka that we try and build? Because the reality is once the uh, Chinese are embedded into the Indian system, the question is, do we have re uh, adequate regulatory as well as judicial capacity to figure out or solve for those conflicts that might happen? All right, uh, Srinath Sidharan uh, over there. Thank you so much for taking time out to be with us here on News 9 Live. Srinath, great talking to you as always. And of course, uh, thank you, uh, thank you. Rakesh Kar, uh, for taking time out to be with us uh, in the studio as well to help us understand uh, the case for Chinese FDI.